Hello and welcome back to my daily coverage of the transcontinental race. This is day nine. Let's head over to the tracker and see what's going on. And as you can see, we almost have a winner. Uh, Christoph Strasser has maintained his lead over Robin Gempele. He is now in Thessaloniki. He is a couple of kilometers away from the finish line and is set to take his second victory in the transcontinental race. So hopefully he's gonna finish while I'm recording and we can see, see him finish live. Um, further back, Robin Gempele, he's ma maintained his second position and we've had an absolutely stunning performance um, from Anatol uh, Naimi, or Name. Um, sorry about the pronunciation there um he's he's just taken an absolute flyer now um i found out a little bit about him he's he's only a young guy 22 23 and um yeah what a what a amazing finish he's had he's really really dragged himself away from that chase chase pack which is it seems to have pretty much exploded over that final um the 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 parkour for a and for b section uh anatole he he, he rode over the the off-road section no problems and um gained a gap and then has has held it uh, overnight um tim devitt is in fourth place and will voslin he's he's in fifth at the moment he's he's taken a route that i i was talking about over and ride with gps um it kind of goes straight through the mountains after uh, after meteola um but the others seem to have done a, a more kind of circular route going down to Larissa. Now, this is the route that Christoph Strasser took, uh, Robin took, most of them took downhill. And you can see there's a big gap in the terrain here that they cut through. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that seems to be the preferred route for many of the, the riders at the moment. Just going for, for basically flatness over mountains at this stage. In the women's race... Um, well, the first woman on the road is still uh, Sherry with her partner Jerome in the pairs race. They're about to hit this parkour for aim for B, although they did uh, struggle a little bit on the last parkour, which was off-road. So I suspect, uh, if you remember, there's there's basically the big option to do some off-roading between these two sections, or we can go back down and around as as uh, Christoph Strasser did. I suspect, given the, the um, difficulties at the, the previous gravel parkour they'll go around the long way um which is going to leave the door open for jamie wilson who's winning who's leading the, the the solo women's race to to catch them and be the first woman on the road outright she's ahead of um uh, maria uh, but maria's uh, really closed that gap um i found out a bit about her as well so she's only been racing a couple of years now uh doing these ultra races at least anyway she won the women's all points north earlier this year um, so yeah, she's obviously got some some talent, um, and then you can see third place Susanna. Uh, she she's kind of fairly uh, comfortable in third now. So it's good to see such a close weight race in the in the, the women's competition. Um, and just note that they are very high up overall as well. Um, it's not a done deal by any by any means. There's still this gravel parkour. Uh, we talked about it the other day. Let's head over to Ride with GPS just to check it out again. So this is the 4A and the 4B sectors. Um, and essentially, if you remember, this section in the middle between the yellow lines, that is not compulsory. So riders could go up and down and around and then up and down the other end or cut through the middle. Now, I've actually um, I found out some information about that parkour as well. So it was actually used in the Hellenic Mountain Race um, earlier this year, um, which is a, well, it's a mountain bike race. Um, so I've got a few photos of that parkour. Um, so yeah, this this is this is basically what it's like. Um, nice, nice and rocky. Um, this bit looks quite good actually. In the Hellenic race, they um, there was actually a massive snowdrift at the top, um, and as you can see uh, from the photo, I'm just about to put up. You know, it's pretty rugged terrain there. There's river crossings, there's stream crossings. It's probably erring on the side of. Um, I won't say mountain biking, but um, you'd definitely be better off on a gravel bike than a road bike, let's say. Um, so yeah, that, that is why that, that option was there. But I mean, it looks absolutely stunning. I'm sure the riders who do do brave it are going to be rewarded somewhat um, by getting up in those mountains. So that's what the riders are experiencing at the moment. Before I go any further, I just want to say thank you so much to Holy Fat for, for getting behind what I've been doing with this race coverage. They've supported me for this this event and the transcontinental race coverage I did. Um, so if you, if you haven't seen that, then maybe go back and uh, and see that when this, this one ends. Um, but yeah, they, they do all these nut butters and bars. Um, I'm taking them with me on the Silk Road Mountain Race. Uh, good, good energy that releases slowly over time 
excellent for these slow efforts and I'm also going to do my shameless plug for the Outer Detour supported adventures I'm going to be guiding on one next March on the road uh, 10th of March with me um, if you've seen this this race coverage been inspired by the transcontinental race maybe want to try a long distance ride but don't know where to start then maybe this is the thing that would be good for you so crossing all the islands of the Canaries staying in hotels and stuff um, but I'll be along for the ride and we'll be able to help out with uh, you know information and um, give you some tips and you know that kind of thing um, and if it's something you want to do you know you're gonna you want to do a ultra further in the year doing this in March might be a good stepping stone so I'll remember to actually put the link in the description below this this the this time because I forgot to yesterday so yeah maybe check that out um, and yeah think about maybe attending let's head over to the main tracker um, do we have a winner just yet we're waiting um, doesn't look like he's there at the moment he's getting there slowly um, but it looks like he's on the seafront so it's it's only going to be a matter of time before Christoph Strasser takes his second victory in the transcontinental race um, while we're waiting for him to finish let's just let's just see what happened um, earlier today because it's not been plain sailing for him he's uh, this this last parkour I, I did speculate the other day that there might be a bit of gravel on it I didn't quite know what it would be like. There's no information on the Google Maps or anything like that. Um, but uh, we'll find out. I mean, this is this this was uh, Christoph earlier this morning um, before he kind of hit the parkour section. Good morning. It's uh, 110 k's to the finish. Still, because I wanted it uh, to be in a different way. Uh, I was pushing through all night without sleep just one short power nap at midnight because i wanted to reach the finish parkour uh, do it strong and fast and reach the finish line in the morning but uh, the first uh, few kilometers are really horrific gravel um, it was more difficult than the other parkours uh, i didn't expect that and I had a crash. I lost uh, my tracker, which I have noticed just uh, three kilometers later. So I turned around, uh, was walking along the path, uh, looking on the follow my challenge site to, to find my tracker again. It cost me another 30 minutes. And most of the time I was pushing my bike and walking because I, I was not able to ride. It was too dangerous and too uh, slippery and muddy and yeah, just terrible. So it took me. So yeah, that's Christoph Strasser, Strasser, our almost invincible looking race leader from the dots at least, really struggling this morning on the, the final parkour. Um, he did put some stories up as well. So we'll, we'll flick through and as you can see, it's been roasting hot the last few days. Just goes to show it's not over until it's over on the transcontinental race. Even the leader can have problems. So there's a lot of close racing still to be done. There's that women's race to be decided. Um, there's the podium, although the, I think the podium is looking fairly solid, but you just never know. Um, and let's just find the photos and here we go this is this is the uh, the parkour so he was there earlier in the morning um, obviously if you get there later in the day I suspect it's going to be very dry but uh, you are near the sea there might be some mist and dew just making the surface quite slippery especially on a road bike um, and you can see I mean if it rains uh, they're in for some uh, for a treat um, so he's, he's punctured and crashed and when you're tired when you've been riding um, you know he's he's been riding a week now it's just going to be very hard work for him but he's he's overcome it he's still there um and it looks like uh, if we just refresh follow my challenge he should have won by now um while we wait for that to sort itself out let's just let's just catch up with robin so this was him through meteorola that's obviously the transcontinental race feed so again fantastic photos on there i do urge you to follow them and see what's been going on and yeah there's a lot of eating going on um a nice beer i see i think that was an alcohol free beer but even so i find it quite funny that he's down in a beer halfway through the transcontinental race and classic quote uh, being quiet on here because i'm fucked <laughs> basically a few hundred k's to go see you tomorrow thessaloniki and he's about to hit that final parkour uh, obviously robbing has some some pedigree off road so we're expecting him to um to do fairly well on that um and yeah making friends on the road um so yeah, he's also take the taken the time to rescue a nice 
turtle or that would be a tortoise wouldn't it from the middle of the road so good on him um when following my challenge finally loads up we might be able to see christoph strasser winning the event um there we go come on you can do it i wonder who's going to finish first strasser or or follow my challenge uh that's the big question um let's zoom out and see where we are and there we go come on you can do it <laughs> So the race is strung out all over Greece now, a continual line of riders, and he's not quite there yet, is he? I think he's there now. In the matter of minutes, he's going to hit where the control crew are, um, and Christoph Strasser is going to take his second victory in the transcontinental race. It's a pretty, um, well, it's, it's no real surprise, you know, this guy has real pedigree, winning the Rams so many times, he's been doing ultra races for years. But I, I'm actually quite impressed um, at the way he's taken to these unsupported races. He, um, I've got to admit, last year I was I was I was surprised to see his name on the start of the transcontinental race, and I wasn't sure. I, I wasn't sure. You never know when you're used to having a guy or a, like a um, a bus behind you with all your all your gear and equipment all the time. Um, I wasn't quite sure how he'd. Uh, how would get on with racing unsupported and he I think he took a while to learn last year but he finished strong and he's finished strong again this year he's really saved a little bit in the tank not far to go now for him um so yeah he's, he's going to be it's about a mile left so let's just go back to Riber GPS and just look into that final um that final parkour um, so I'll go to my collection. Uh, this is the collection page of Ride with GPS, and this is my, uh, my uh, amongst other things, the Silk Road race, which is coming up for me in the next few days. Uh, this is the collection I made. So we'll dig into that final run into the finish, um, CP4 to finish. Um, again, I've made a bit of a. I, I've, I guess I've gone for the obvious straight line route on um, on my on my route, um, but most riders have dropped down to the coast around Larissa. So I've kind of opted for a straight line through the mountains here, uh, but everyone else seems to have just dropped down up and down the parkour and gone round on the flat bit. So gone to Trikala, uh, Larissa, um, which is a cool town actually, I've been through there. This this is a really nice area in Greece uh, and around the coast. I guess um, that probably, probably a bit longer, well, definitely longer, uh, but you'll save a hell of a lot of climbing. Um, so yeah, it looks like they've, uh, They've, most riders have now opted for that flat route um, and then obviously it's, it's kind of flat into that, that final running before you get this this nice off-road section which is, has been a bit spicy. Um, I'm not quite sure where, where Christoph Strasser punctured. I assume it's on this first section here because it looked like it was quite early in the morning. He's been riding most of the day now. Um, but as you can see the riders, this yellow section is the final parkour. So the riders don't really have to plan um, anything um, and at least you're following the line and psychologically it can be a little bit easier just to follow that line knowing you're going in the right place there's none of these these route decisions um, and yeah it looks like they roll down to the seafront I believe it's a sailing club they finish at let's see if he's made it yet he's oh, he's, he's, he's basically there on the final straight um, so there we go I will be back tomorrow with the, the full updates because right follow my challenge is uh, it's been a bit of a pain again. Um, so yeah, looks like Christoph Strasser is about to win the transcontinental race for the second time. I'll be back tomorrow with all the imagery, all the photos. Hopefully we'll have a podium in place by that point as well. And we'll see how the women's race is um, is developing because that is also going to be a very tight and very exciting race to follow. So yeah, see you again in the morning. Thanks for watching.